whisperer. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Um, well, I always say my mother actually raised me to be an interior designer, but she didn't know it. Awesome. Uh, she had had polio when she was young. And so raising us, she was always moving house around and we'd get up, I'd be five or six years old and we'd get up in the morning, come on girls, we're going to move furniture. And we did. Wow. And she was constantly changing things so that, you know, if we were putting our book bag someplace where she would trip over it, she'd move furniture. So we wouldn't do that. All right. Smart and, woman. Right. Yeah. So she was constantly moving things around. And her feeling was that, well, she knew she was going to be in that house forever. And since most people move houses every seven years, she thought it was normal for her to move her house around oh, every seven weeks. <laughs> Well, that must have been exciting. I mean, that that's different, but it's I think it's it, it keeps lifeblood and you know moving and energy moving. It does. And so we were always changing things. I thought this was normal, and I didn't realize it wasn't for I'm embarrassed to say how old I was, but anyway. That's all um, right. I went to school, my first degree is in literature because I love character study. I mm. love what makes people tick. Mm. and then I went into publishing and in three years of publishing there were eight babies born in my department and I didn't have any so guess what I got to <laughs> everybody did and I decided that was not my future okay so I went back to school for interior design so I was bored I took a class at the community college and I fell head over heels in love and at the same time I went back to school and I was studying about the psychology of color because color has an impact on us everywhere we go. You think it's just a pretty room. It's not, no, no, no. Everywhere you go, you're being influenced by color. Hmm. And, we'll have to get into that. Yes. <laughs> I had an experience that made it really hit home for me. Hmm. I had had asthma really bad. The doctors just gave me a bunch of pills that made me feel worse. Hmm. And I found this guy who was a healer and he said my asthma was because my father had died when I was a year old. Wow. I wouldn't have been able to process the grief. Mm. It got stuck in my lungs, making it hard for me to breathe. Wow. So he cleared that. And a few days later, I started sobbing, not crying. Yeah. Sobbing. Yeah. Now, when you have asthma, you can't do that because you can't breathe. So I was like, this is not a Kleenex kind of thing. I went to the cupboard and I got a towel and I reached out and I was going to grab the top one and everything in me said, no, you need the green towel. Mm. Green, green helps you deal with grief. Wow. It helps you process emotions. And so, I'm getting chills. This I know, is right? so beautiful. I am getting chills. I, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt you. I'm going to have to give this disclaimer when you give a break. <laughs> wow. So that's when like the, the color psychology like really hit home with me. And yeah. then I took another class and I call it the personality of color. And it's all about the colors that, that affect you. So, and that are the right, the color shapes, styles, and textures that fit with your energy. Mm. I need lots of texture. You see, I've got lots of texture on today, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So when you're in harmony with what you're wearing, it makes you more powerful. Mm. I said to myself, what if you could be in harmony with your surroundings? How much more powerful would that be? Wow. And that's when the color whisperer was born. Well, Thank you. So that was so beautiful. I mean, I'm, I have chills because <laughs> it's such a beautiful story. I love it when what we're doing now is like what we were cultivated to do through our life experiences, because I totally believe in that everything that happens in our life is for our purpose. And you are in your purpose for sure. Like you said, you know, because you feel that power, it, it's your place of power. Absolutely. Not power to do rule over anybody, but power to, to enrich and enhance the world through enriching, enhancing lives. Yeah. I want to take this moment to just take, uh, to give the disclaimer. And that is that this is a general discussion about mental health. 
or those things that affect our mental health in a powerful, positive, holistic way. And uh, it's not to be interpreted as a specific advice in a specific situation. Every situation is unique. And this is not meant to replace your psychiatrist or medical doctor in any way, uh, but, but definitely is powerful and worth listening to, okay? <laughs> worth hearing and taking the time to hear its entirety. I don't see any guests yet, but uh, that's okay because this is being recorded. So if you've missed any of it, if you come in in the middle of it, but you'll be able to see the whole thing through the recording. And so you told us that the colors impact us. Tell us a little bit more about that. So one of my favorite ways to have it really hit home is if you think about restaurants. Now, you and I are coffee shops used to be different than, you know, Starbucks and stuff like that. So the old coffee shops, fast food places, what colors were they? Red and yellow. Red and yellow, right? <laughs> the old fashioned ones, you know? Red, yeah. and, or red and orange. And orange. Red, oh, okay. Right. And so you do see the red and yellow, but you, you see a lot of red and orange. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So both of them are going to make your food taste better. Red helps you with digestion. Orange wow. makes you hungrier. Makes and, sense. but the combination of those two in conjunction with each other, it's got a lot of energy and it's, a, it's very intense energy. And, or a fire. Right? But most people aren't comfortable mm -hmm. being in that for a long time. So these coffee shops, they didn't want you to linger. They wanted you to get in, get out quick, right? The yeah. Fast food, they want you to get in, get out quick. Yeah. So that's what they used to control how long you spent there. Wow. Okay. Now you go to your Starbucks and those kind of coffee shops. You're not going to see those colors anywhere. You're going to see mm. eels. You're going to see eggplants. You're going to see green still. You're going to see... You might see some red and orange because they do want you to eat, but you want, they want you to buy their stuff. Right. But it's much more of a calming atmosphere because their tactic is a little different. They want you to hang out there, figuring that the longer you stay, the more coffee you're going to buy. And more, yeah, so you'll spend on whatever food right? whatever they have. Right? Now, if you've got a habit near you, that's really interesting turn on this. Um, if you've gone into a habit, they they've done it's kind of upscale fast food okay it's an upscale fast food hamburger joint is what it is so what they did with their decor is they have wood lots of wood but it's orange type wood there's there's an orange tint to the wood mm -hmm. and then on their molding they have a red but it also, the red has a little bit of orange in it too. So they're still using the technique. They've just upscaled. Sophisticated. <laughs> so that's- You're in this? <laughs> As yeah, I noticed- it's all, over, around, all around us. We don't even realize it. Right? You're never going to go look at a restaurant the same again. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, another thing is when you go into the hospital. So they always give you a gown to put on. Most of the time, it's blue. The reason is the color blue actually helps retard the spread of disease. Mm, wow. Wow. Right? Yeah. And wow. so what they do they encase you in blue just to help slow that process down. Yeah. Blue helps us forget the passage of time. And it also makes us feel safe. So where do you see a lot of blue? In, in the sky. In airports. Okay. Because you know, a lot of people are nervous getting on the plane and you yeah. know, there's all these delays, especially right now, there's all these delays. You never know when your plane's going to get delayed. And so they make it blue to help you forget how long you're waiting. Hmm. And wow. they also want you to trust the pilot. So whenever you have servicemen coming to your house, a lot of times they're going to wear blue because you're letting a, a strange, usually it's a man, into mm -hmm. the house. So just by wearing that blue creates a level of trust. Wow. Wear a blue suit. Wow. So that's just a few things. Yes. Orange for uh, appetite or increasing our appetite, helping with our digestion. <laughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and not too much of it. <laughs> so we can go you know, green 
to it's a was it healing green, green was well, both green and blue are healing colors green and blue are healing yeah the oh. blue and calming and trusting re creating trust and the blue inhibiting the spread of disease wow wow, wow. i told people they're going to be amazed and excited because <laughs> it really is. This is so exciting. And so how do does the color whisperer use this tech or use this this knowledge and psychology in your work? I, you know, it's so innate in me at this point. I just use it. Yeah. So what I do is um, I'll, I have my, my deck, you know, so kind of like a medium has their their tarot deck. So I have my paint deck. Okay. I consult the deck. <laughs> wow. So it's very intuitive for it's you. It's very intuitive at this point. Now I always ask my client, how do you want to feel in this space? That's a really important thing. Wow. The first thing I do when I go into a client's home, as I walk through, I can do this virtually or in person, but I walk through and I'm looking at, okay, what's working? what's not working there's no judgment i'm just trying to see what what's i'm getting a sense of who their style what their style is and who they really are their essence wow because i want to i want to design for that soul part of them mm. so i'm looking around oh this is working this is not working okay i like this i like that da, da, da. and then intuitively i'm picking up on what kinds of shapes that they like um, one of my fun stories is I had a, this guy, very macho guy. There's no pictures in the house. I can see no, he, I mean, he doesn't have any pictures of family or friends up anywhere. I've got very little to go on. I walk into his house downstairs is totally, you know, like I I'm feeling nothing. And I'm like, okay, let's go up to the bedroom. There's gotta be a feeling of him in the bedroom there. Right. So we go into the bedroom and I consult my deck and I come up with this kind of mauve color and I look at this, you know, masculine Italian guy. Right. And I'm like, mm -mm. I go back to the deck, brings me back to the same color, <laughs> back to the deck. Third time. My rule is the third time I pick something out. That's it. That's it. Right. So I showed him the color. I said, what do you think of this color? Oh my gosh, Jeanette, that's my favorite color. Come here, let me show you. I got 10 <laughs> that color in the closet. So that's how intuitive it came. That is awesome. You wow. Know? And sometimes I got to work on a craftsman house a few weeks ago. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They were struggling with finding the right colors because they're trying to put modern colors in this old house. Can't do it. Mm. And so the house was like, I want to, you know, Craftsman House is so bold and it really needs a certain feeling to it. Mm. And we were able to find all the right colors and, and make everyone- You weren't able to find all the right colors. Of course you would. Of course you would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I imagine you must have albums of homes that you have designed for people. That is so beautiful. There's uh, some of it on my website, so you can see some of them at thecolorwhisperer.com. You need all three words. It's not color. It's the co the colorwhisperer.com. Color whisper. Yes. because so, And I'll put that <laughs> in the caption too, but just for yes. if anyone wants to go there right now. So uh, this is what came to me. Two things. I have my favorite color is electric. Well, blue, as you can see in my logo there. Those are and I, what I'm wearing too. <laughs> And so th really those are lavender, uh, those shades of blue and the pink and the, the uh, turquoise. Yeah, those are just like, they're just colors that just come to me. I don't even try to go looking for them. They just come to me. Like my water bottle is this color. My umbrella is that color. I have all my workout. I didn't choose, they just kind of, yep. <laughs> So, and I love filigree. Yes. You know, the swirls. Yes. So, what does that tell you? <laughs> <laughs> so I have, um, there's four, in part of my work, there's four personality types 
And each one has their own set of colors, styles, textures that fit who they are, that fit somebody. And so within that, there's a lot of variation. Okay. But for basic, so everybody has their own unique design palette, right? So like I said, I need lots of texture is one of mine. Um, so what you've just described to me tells me which one you are. And that then also tells me a lot about, you know, you're somebody who loves to support people. You are very, um, you like a lot of calm around you. You're not somebody who, like, you like kind of a steady, a steady progression. You're not like, it has to be like, let's sprint to the finish. No, no, no. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in my time and I'm going to get there. And <laughs> And, but there's a calmness about you that wherever you go, you bring calm. Mm. And mm. so that's what that tells me. Isn't that wow. color? Wow. Now, the other thing too, is when we're craving a color. So you've just said these colors chose you, yeah. right? Yeah. So you ever gone through a phase where like you never wore green maybe, but now suddenly you're wearing green mm -hmm. or whatever color it is. So. It's because your body knows what color it needs. Wow. And wow. So I love that. Craving green, I bet there was a big change in your life. I've done this in classes. I've taught classes and like, yeah, all of a sudden I changed. I, I crave this color. And I'm like, so this happened or this happened. You're like, yeah, how'd you know? Are you psychic? <laughs> <laughs> I am. A there's, a, there's a science to it. But That's there's a science to it. Wow. Uh, and. One of my favorite stories too is I had a little girl. This is five years after 9-11. And she's sleeping and she's nine years old. She's sleeping in the room with mom and dad. And she had nightmares still after 9-11. And they couldn't figure out why. So anyway, I said, show me her room. So we go in there and there are these big wide stripes in the wall like this. <clears throat> and mom tells me the little girl's dyslexic. So those stripes weren't like this. They were like this mm. just before the towers fell so mm. it ended for her. So I told mom, I said, first of all, you need to get rid of the stripes. You've done a nice little princess room. She, what she did was pretty, but it just wasn't the right room for her little girl. I said, secondly, yellow is going to help her to learn better. It's going, so that's why we have yellow pads. That's why we wow. have stickies because it helps us to learn better. Wow. And so mom tells me we can't get her out of the living room and there's a lot of yellow there. So this little nine-year-old girl, her body knew the answer, her soul yes. knew the answer, yes. but there was no brain that told her this is going to solve the problem. Right. And what doctor would have solved that problem? How many pills would this little girl have been on? All I they know. had to do was a can of paint, a can of paint solved the problem. That's why you're here, my dear. Yes. <laughs> That's how miraculous this can be. So when you're craving a color, embrace it. I always tell people if they're like, what's the one thing you want people to know? I'm like, don't pick a color with your brain. Don't pick a color because some trendy designer said this is in. By the way, I will never say this is the color that's in and you should paint your house that color. You paint the color that's for you. Coming from your heart. Right? And if you can take the brain out of it, and you pick that color with your gut, you will never be wrong. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. I, those are my, those are the kinds of things that I work with. Yeah. And, and, and help people with because this, you know, much of our suffering comes from taught misteachings. Yes. You know, and, and, and it's nobody to blame. There's no blame. It's just we're evolving, we're growing. And you know, as a child, you just kind of experimenting and seeing what, what works. Well, that's what we're doing. And we're learning what doesn't work. We, we, we're, we're, we're in a lot of what doesn't work. And so now we're learning what does and it comes from within and it's different for everybody. Yeah. And it's we'll okay. Life stories, you know, we all have different life stories and everybody is different. You know, my father died when I was a year old. I had all that grief stuck in my lungs, yeah. you know, and somebody else may have had a different reaction to it. 
you know, or they may have the, the similar. I mean, they we can. have a lot of things in common and we have a lot of things of different. And I believe the beauty in that is that we can support each other where we have commonalities and we can appreciate each other where we have differences. Yes. We can appreciate the difference and appreciate our ourselves where we're different. And that's the wonderful thing about this color personality is that nobody's bad. Nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. Each one of us has a different gift to the world. Each one of us has our own special place that we're supposed to show up. Some of us are cheerleaders. Some of us are leaders. Some of us are support people. Some of us are more analytical. We all have our own special talent. And it's not about making anybody right. Because you know what? We need all of them. Absolutely. You can't have a world of only leaders. Nothing would get done. And yes. everybody would be grumbling. And you everybody can't tell everybody what to do. No, right. leaders don't tell about people what to do, by the way. I just, <laughs> we can't have all that. <clears throat> they, they do like to delegate, <laughs> you yeah. know? And you can't have only people who are being delegated to because then nobody's leading. It's like exactly. We, we need them all. Wonderful mesh. All of these things, all of our gifts are necessary. People tell me all the time, oh, Jeanette, I just don't have your gift. And I said, and you know what? I don't have yours. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't do what you do. So, you know, you hire me to do what I'm really good at. But you know what? I want to <clears throat> bring that out. <clears throat> So many people think that they should have everybody else's gift. And, 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 that, and that is so not true. That's where you have to appreciate your unique gift because everybody has their own unique gift and that's their gift to hone and give to the world and operate in to experience fulfillment, to just love themselves and love the world through their gift because it's what comes easy to us that is our gift if we all had the same gift what a boring world it would be yes yes you know, and what an inefficient world it would be <laughs> if it would really function if everyone had the same gift yeah if everybody was a color whisperer that'd be great there'd be tons of color but who's building the furniture who's 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 fixing the plumbing? Who's, who's you know, cooking we, the food? <laughs> who's growing the food? <laughs> who's growing the food? You know, we all have to find joy in our own way because yeah. it all contributes to the world. And I think that some the other misconception is some people think they're supposed to know it all and do it all. No. Mm -mm. Each one brings their special gift and contributes to the whole absolutely we all have value and, absolutely yeah and bring value so <clears throat> what is one of your another you shared the one where the guy what you couldn't see the mob but it, it, it just came out when you shared it oh that's my favorite color. what is another very memorable <clears throat> client that was that struck you you know that just kind of changed your world so one of my first clients was this lovely lady. I was teaching a class at the time and she'd come to my class and about a year later, I get a phone call from her and she's like, Jeanette, I want to hire you. And her husband had died and it had been a couple of years since he died and she was ready to change the house. And she said she hired me because I was more fun than a, psycho a psychologist. <laughs> There's a lot of psychological work that I do, especially yeah. with my intuition and my healing abilities. Cause that, that guy that healed my asthma, I actually learned what he did. So mm. I utilize all of this in my work. Yes. And so, that was meant to, that was a part of your evolution. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So I go to her house <clears throat> and the house hadn't been decorated since the sixties. So we've got the avocado green wall carpet. <laughs> we've got the metallic wallpaper. And it was all what her husband had decorated with his ex-wife. And none of it was her. Uh -huh. None of it felt like her. She was kind of a blue person. The house was all orange and green and heavy and dark. And, you know, it was a seven, you know, it was a 60, right. 60 70, 70. Yeah. So it was that kind of decor. So we're talking and 
she happens to mention that she's still using the ex-wife's coffee pot. Now, I don't know who keeps a coffee pot for 10 years, but she was still using the ex-wife's coffee pot. And I said, go throw that away now. And you're going to go to the store and you're going to buy a new coffee pot today. She goes, oh, I have one in the garage. So go get it right now. Go get it. And we plugged it in. And that's what she needed to make the place hers. So she'd already kind of given her permission, one to, thing. permission to do it. But turning that coffee pot and getting that coffee pot, I went there about a week later with some ideas and some suggestions and stuff like that. And she had peeled all the wallpaper. Like, so it was that, that brown stuff underneath, but like the metallic the coffee pot just started it all. Right. And it was what she needed to give herself permission, not just to change the house, but to be her. Yeah. Be her. And she couldn't figure out what her style was. She kept asking me, what's my style, Jeanette? What's my style? And I said, I'm going to show you. I'm not going to give it a name because I don't want to put you in that box, but I'm going to show you the beauty of who you are mm. in the house. And wow. that's exactly what we did. And wow. she was so nervous that the kids, because when she first moved in, the kids were like, don't touch nothing. Don't touch nothing. They were grown, but still, that's my mom's, you know? And oh, she, the kids. Okay. So the, they were her, they were her stepchildren. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then oh, she got it all done and she invited them over and they're like, oh, we love it. And why did you wait so long? And, and here's this thing that, you know, some 17 year old girl and in her own grief said, but it stuck with this woman for how long? And it was holding her back. And these are the things that, you know, people don't do intentionally. The daughter was dealing with her own grief of her mom had died. And why is my dad with somebody else? And, and I don't want that, you know, I don't want my mom to disappear. And, and, but that was her grief. And yeah, right. got taken into, because my client was in her own grief. Of, oh my God, I've lost my husband. She was only 50 years old. She thought she was spending the rest of her life with this man. Mm. And, and yeah, she wasn't. And right. so they all had, so they all dealt with grief in a different way. Um, I've, you know, I told you the story about my father. So there's always been grief in my world. Um, both my parents are gone. I've had two miscarriages. I mean, like I've got plenty of other stuff, you know, there that I get grief <laughs> and yeah. what I do helps people to go through that grief. Yeah. I can't take it away from you. Grief doesn't just go away. What happens is we get stronger around it. Mm. and mm, I love that building, uh, when you create the space because you a lot of times there's like ghosts I call them you know like I, I say there's his chair in the corner that maybe he smoked a pipe in or cigarettes or whatever and at first you're like oh I can smell his cologne I can smell the cigarette I can whatever his smell is mm -hmm. so you're in that chair going oh I can still feel close. I can still kind of wrap him up in me. You're not ready to really let it go. Mm. But then after a while, it's like, you know, I really never liked that chair and it smells. I mean, like you, you got, you, you, it served its purpose. Now it's time. It's really it. not healthy thing for me to have. And while it's good to honor that you had that 20, 30, 10, whatever years it was with that person, yeah. it was a big part of your life. You don't need something that is holding you back from the next part of your life. Right. So I'm able to find that mix for people of, hey, mm. let's create a life that you want to live. What does mm. that look like? Let's create the, the furniture, the rooms, the lifestyle for that to happen. Wow. And, you know, we're going to get rid of some of those pieces that, you know, maybe smell. <laughs> <laughs> they're ghosts they're ghosts and we want to get rid of the ghosts and we can still keep and honor the past without having the ghosts there yeah what about the spirit because there are there you know when we leave here we we, are, we go back to spirit and I we're and, and i believe we when we visit like you know, you, you could just say the ghost, but the, the whisperer, that makes sense. <laughs> but I'm in my language and lingo, I'm thinking spirit and that spirit is there, but you don't have to have the chair for the spirit to come and visit you. 
No. I I have seen many spirits. I have felt many. I, I don't always get to see see them. I usually get to feel them. I have seen a couple. Um, I had one client I worked with for about three years, and I could I would often feel him in the space. Whenever we brought in something new, he would come in and he'd be all excited. He wanted to see. Wow. You know. Okay. And, um, she was in her eighties and she decided at the end of our, you know, what ended our term was she had to go live near her daughter. She needed a little bit more care. And so I had to close up the space as well. And that was kind of hard because this was, you know, it was kind of my baby, you know, mm -hmm. and I got all done. I was saying goodbye to the house and thanking it myself because I needed to do that for me. Mm. And I looked up and I saw this man, I, I live in LA, okay? This guy had this like long trench coat on, this heavy coat and, and you know, he's looking, she had this big window and he was looking in the window and it was like, if I met your husband, we'd known each other for a couple of years, but I never met your husband. And then all of a sudden I met your husband and he would just go, oh yeah, I know who you are. We've never met, but I know who you are. Yeah. And he just gave me this big smile. Mm. And I reached down to pick up my purse and he was gone. So I do feel that. And sometimes there's messages. I'll give those to my clients. Sometimes it's just for me to say, yes, we're doing the right thing. They usually will tell me what needs to be done. Um, I do also do home energy clearings. And so sometimes there's spirits there that you didn't invite or that don't mm. belong to you. Mm. And I can get rid of them. Mm. Um, I had wow. a client who lived in East LA and the house had burned down and in the time between when they rebuilt it and, um, there'd been gangs, people living there, homeless people, somebody had gone in and drawn all these satanic signs on, mm, no. on, on the, okay. in the basement and, you know, like, wow, so they fixed it up. They were doing everything they could. They were giving love back to the house, but I walked in the house and I was like, I was there energy for, here yeah and I'm like this is you know she's like well show me a tour and we got to the basement I'm like yeah we're not gonna go in there quite yet and she's like, we'll go in there I said but just not quite yet I want to do something first yeah so I um I told her I said you really need an energy clearing so let's do that and so we did mm -hmm. and you know, then we went down the basement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just imagine, you know, how many people have no idea about right. these things and yet they affect them. Absolutely. Just because you don't, you don't, don't know it, it is affecting you and, but they, people don't know what it is and why, and they're going to the doctor. The doctor is not going to address that in any way, shape or form. It's not even going to be in the picture in the room. <laughs> so this knowledge is crucial. Absolutely. It is, it's, it's just so uh, invaluable and life changing in the best way possible. Your house is a spirit too. We, your, you can talk <clears throat> to your house. Your house can help you. Mm-hmm. And, and not just because of what I do, which it certainly can't. I mean, we work hard for our homes. So why shouldn't our homes work just as hard for us? And if we talk to them and we ask them, mm. they will. They so can and they will. What about rent, uh, rental? You know, like if you're renting a house or an apartment or... If you're paying the rent you have the power to change your apartment. Now, if it's an apartment, you have the rent to change your apartment. You can't change the whole building. Building. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have, a, if the, there's, you know, unless the owner says you have permission, you know, if you can get permission from the owner to do that. Okay. Thing, then that's another story. Okay. Um, but within your, you know, space, your space, space. Space, mm -hmm. you can, you can ask and you can influence that. Um, so if you've got somebody next door who's doing God knows what, you know, that can, you know, but you can ask your apartment to say, don't let that negative energy, maybe there's somebody who's fighting all the time or whatever, but you can ask your apartment to like, keep that out. I don't want that in my space. Wow. 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 
<laughs> this is that's a new one to me. Uh, I know that we can send love out from our hearts to send it into the, all the whole building and the city and where, but I I never heard that the how the dwelling itself ha has that kind of energy to keep out you know to honor our requests and wow it just has to be you just have to ask but if you think about it what is a house's purpose okay a house's purpose is to protect us from the weather from you know all this stuff but i, I it's kind of like a dog if a dog doesn't have a purpose if a dog doesn't know what it's supposed to do it it's it just kind of flounders around or like when will we retire you know a lot of people just loves us, us. You know, a lot of people, when they <laughs> retire, they're like, oh, what am I supposed to do now? Like, I've lost my purpose. Yeah. So, but a house's purpose is to protect us. So why wouldn't that happen energetically? Hmm. Hmm. We just don't acknowledge that that's there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. once you know that it's there and you can talk to your house and say, hey, can you protect me? Then the house is like, yes, I'm in business. Let's go. You know? So you can, you know, ask for your house to help you with whatever it is that you're struggling with. That's beautiful. I, I believe that everything is energy. Mm -hmm. Everything is energy. And so it makes sense that we honor our, the energy of our home. Right. And that energy of our home, like you said, has a purpose and let it know that it has a purpose and, and, and be interactive with it serving its purpose. I love that. It, because and, and everything is energy is, <clears throat> excuse me, the context for yes. that makes sense. Have you ever been in, in a house that's been abandoned for a while? I don't think I have. Where you just, you, maybe there's a house that nobody's been living in for a while and you're just driving by. It looks sad, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks uncared for. Yeah. But the house is actually sad because it wants something to do. Yeah. Yeah. Wants somebody in it. It yeah. wants, that's, and, and so if we it's take. Just like a dog with own, without an owner. Exactly. So if we take care of our homes and we do that by, you know, there's a lot of things we can do, but when keeping it, you know, keep the clutter free. Yeah. Keep the clutter free. Mm. It's not about, does it have to be perfect, but it's clearing that clutter also clears our minds too yeah but it keeps but it's saying house i love you you know mm. cleaning our house says i love you house yes oh, getting things that. fixed even if it's a little bit you know yeah, paint a little bit you know mm -hmm. doing things to 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 fix mm. it uh, whether it's a small scale hanging whether it's hanging a picture or painting a wall these are all things that says hey i love you what do you think about our house being an extension of us? Oh, it absolutely is. Tap, absolutely. Just give me your take on your, your understanding on how our house is an extension of us, the relationship between us and our house. If you can. Oh, there's so much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so yeah. you just told us about how we can talk to it and ask yes. it to support us and keep out things, certain things and so what else can we can we do that would be would change our relation that would just enhance our relationship with our house? So much like you would have a family member that you are aligned energetically with. I, one of the things I do as well is I align the house's energy with my clients. So it does. It's kind of like a couple. If I'm working with a couple, then there's three. So I consider it a family. The house has to be in alignment. So. Um, I don't usually get to design things I would live in. The house behind me, um, the house I'm showing you in the picture behind me, that's one of the few houses I've done that I would live in because if you look at it, it's in alignment with me, okay? There's lots of texture, there's green, the colors. I feel alive in this. Now, let me show you. Yeah, your, your outfit complements the backsplash. Right. <laughs> and vice versa. So let me show you another house that I did. That's not in alignment with <clears throat> Do you have, do you take before and after pictures? You know, I'm really bad at taking before pictures. That's okay. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, I love to see. I love that filigree. That was the first thing this that jumped out to me. This is you, but do you see how I disappear here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So I'm not in alignment with the space. This would be a great room for you. It would. I love it. It's, I love it. <laughs> but for me, like, you don't even see me. Like, I don't even have to take my face out, you know? I see you. Like, you don't even see <laughs> oh, my, I see but, that. That's so beautiful. But you don't see me in this picture because it's not a reflection. Whereas if I do this, yeah, I'm front and center. Before the picture, the background was all you saw. Now you're seeing me because the background is in alignment with me. Mm. So when you're in an alignment with when your house is an extension of your energy and you combine mm. the house's energy and your energy, it's like the perfect marriage. Mm. Like you guys are, because well, to me, any good relationship, it's about filling in the empty spaces. Mm. How do we help build each other? It's like two cogs. Mm. The idea is to, that each piece of that cog, each cog on that wheel helps to build something better, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And where one is empty, the other one comes in and, and pushes up, right? Right. So that, so your house can be that too. Now it can also be the other way around. So if I was living in that other house that you saw, it would actually be tearing me down. Mm. So for, for you, it would build you up. For me, I, you know, I would be miserable. And here, here's another part of that house, which is beautiful. I could not live in this. I would mm. go absolutely nuts living. Only there. For me, it's just missing a little blue. Okay. <laughs> would be fine for you but for me i walk in this room and i need something to ground the only thing i have to ground me in this room is that fireplace mm. and when i look at this room i go beeline to the fireplace the rest of it doesn't really exist for me now this is a gorgeous room i'm very proud of this it room. is beautiful it's gorgeous and oh, it's perfect oh, for that client but for me to live in it this would tear my energy apart every wow. day wow Wow. I mean, just the contrast of what works for one or what is medicine for one can be poison for the other, you know, right? it's just, wow. Wow. And so that's why I get mad at these trendy, like let's everybody paint our houses gray or everybody paint your house white, white makes everything look better. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. What's important is that it fits you. And like, I don't have to live in this space. I can design a beautiful white room and I don't have to live in it. And it's perfect for my clients. Now, interesting that you say that, that this would be great for me. And it, it may well be, but my husband hates white. No, I'm or sure. Ecru or anything that's, you know, like that. <laughs> so opposites attract. So um what do you do when you've got that kind of uh you know contrast with the, within the couple that's living in the house so there's like i said there's always at least two people and there's the house and the person and um there's the uh the if there's more than one person in the house that's come so i talk a little bit about this with my book what's color got to do with it oh i love that i love that did, did <laughs> we talk, talk about this that your your what's color got to do with it and mine is what's love got to do with it and that's what i'm all about <laughs> is love <laughs> i don't think we talked it. about that i love it so cool i love it so I'm looking for a picture that, okay, well here, this is, I'm going to take my face out of this a little bit because I want to okay. show you something. Okay. So I love that. Um, now this was a room that the client had inherited these, those, those chairs, they're called East Lake chairs mm, and I love they them. are, they're antique, they're, they were his mom's, but it was not his style. So he said, Jeanette, how do we mix her style with my style and give me a room he really wanted a guest room that was very calm and peaceful that was mm. his thing so what we did was we had the east lake chairs and i put on a more modern fabric and we used a lot of greens and blues because he wanted calm so that's what we did we created calm yeah so if you look at the top of the east lake chair 
Mm-hmm. There's that, um, there's like a little crown there. Yes. So we took that motif and you'll see it replicated in the table that's sitting between the chairs. Yes. Also okay. in the custom bookcase that I built for him. Okay. Yeah. And so that's how we took something wow. that was an antique and made it more modern. And so you look at these and complimented chairs, it. And they don't look like they're totally out of place. But mm-hmm. they yeah. Blend in. It works. In. Yeah. And so that's what I do with a a couple is I'm sh- most, you know, they say opposites tracked. So I'm guessing your husband is probably um <clears throat> your well, is your husband like the cheerleader or is he more of a leader? Oh, he's the leader. He's the leader. <laughs> he's the leader. And 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 he can be a cheerleader at times too. Yes. When the time, you know, we, you know, that's yeah. what I figured. Usually, usually summers go towards autumns, and so what you do is, um, I can show you a little bit in this room. So this this room has some elements that I would mix. So you can see the tile behind me. Mm-hmm. So it's very small. It's so summers tend to like more things more it's more of a smooth energy whereas autumns tend to like a lot of a lot of a lot more energy so Mm. so the good thing is both of you need motion we just have to have different speeds of motion so for you we want to have something in the space that's got smaller you know this is a smaller tile there's not a lot of motion it's more monochromatic you tend to like things that are more monochromatic. He he can do monochromatic, but if we do monochromatic for him, he's got to have a ton of texture. Hmm. You like texture, but it's in smaller amounts. You actually have a little bit more texture than most summers do. So that's a good place for you guys to blend. Wow. So that's that's what we can do. do I love this. I love it because it's functional, it's scientific. Absolutely. It's intuitive. It's energetic. It's universal. It is definitely what we, where we need to be going when it comes to understanding our environment and creating an environment that we can thrive in. So let me show you another thing. So right now I've got this, this shirt that's got lots of ruffles on it, right? Mm -hmm. Lots Lots of texture texture. there. And look at my necklace, lots of texture. So yeah. I'm full autumn. Now, what happens if I do this? Okay, now I'm still doing my thing. Uh, okay. Okay, so I'm still doing my thing, but it's simpler. It's calmer. Mm -hmm. This is where where this one was beautiful. The other necklace was beautiful. This is a very different feeling. But this, I've got I've got all this motion here, but then I got a little calmer here. So Mm -hmm. that's how you would mix for both of you. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm sorry. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And I love it. I love it. And yeah, that calm, I felt it. (laughs) Right? So today, I mean, I almost put this one on actually. It happened to be right here. So it was a perfect uh, segue (laughs) and example. I I somehow I intuitive I would I would need it. So, but I wanted to be really in my my splendor, which was that's your splendor. Yes, yes. You yeah. know, so when I want to feel more, or gorgeous, more casual look for me, but you can see there's still elements, but it's a, it's a subtler look. Yeah. You have the texture, you have the, the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the elegance yeah. and, and so you're still making a statement and a comfortable one that reflects you. It's just more bold with your uh, the larger, yeah, more texture. That's how you mix. Is you, I make sure that there's something for each person, mm. and and a lot of times we'll even choose a house that's a different personality than us. Sometimes we choose a house that's 
the same personality as us, but sometimes we'll choose different. And so I make sure that in every space I design, there's a little something for everybody. Mm. So it went, you're in California, Southern California. Do you ever like, I know you said you could do it virtually, but I think that some things just better in person. So do you ever fly places to do these? You know, it's only a matter of money. I'll go anywhere. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So just put that in there, put the airfare in there and the the room and board and you're there. Okay. Pretty much. On top of the, the that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, And it's worth it. Huh? It's worth it. It's <clears throat> worth it. And, and what I do, I mean, there, it's not just about making a pretty room. There's lots of designers out there that can make a pretty room. Right. I'm not doing that. I'm soothing your soul. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm soothing your soul. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, what you've got, and my intention is to get this out as, as, as much as I can. It'll be in the YouTube, it'd be on my website and on Facebook and wherever we share it, LinkedIn. So what would you like the listeners to know? You know, it's really about listening to their bodies. I mean, that's like the number one thing is don't follow some guru's advice on what color you should paint your house. If you see a color in a magazine and you like it, it's going to look different in your house. What you need to do is find you need to answer that question with your body. Now, of course, I prefer that you hire me and what the magic <clears throat> and what I get to create for my clients, it's amazing. And, you know, but if you can't hire me, you know, it's not as, you know, I'm not Frank. It's not father of the bride here. You know, it's like, I work with different budgets and, but it's really about having a home that feels good to you. And that you have that relationship with your home. And that's what I help you build. And so, you know, talk to your home, listen to your gut, pick the colors with your gut. And, you know, like I said, I do have my book out there. It's called What's Color Got to Do With It? Color Got to Do With It. Get it. A lot of information. And, you know, if you want to talk more about it, I do offer a complimentary half hour consultation. Wow. That's generous. Let's get in. Show me your house. on how can we make this a better situation for you I love it I love it and you know you you work with your color swatches but the biggest thing is your intuition and your intuition and our intuition our intuition could well it's going to be it's going to be clear it's going to be uh accurate but whether we can understand its accuracy is the question and well, you have I do been, have a lot of training <laughs> right exactly that's what I was going to say you have been in tu- you have tuned your intunement to your intuition to understand it clearly what it's communicating and how to convey that in design in interior design and that is just amazing. I, I tr- and you know, just like when I was brought up as a, an emotional healing coach. And at the time when I was first realizing this and I went online looking for emotional healing coaches, there were none out there. At least they weren't online yet. But around the same time, the universe was bringing up many emotional healing coaches. And so I trust that you know, because there's a big world out there. You couldn't possibly serve them all. (laughs) That this is a new, that the universe is bringing up these emotional, I'm sorry, uh, intuitive interior designs to help us to create what works for us, what serves us in our home. And I am just thrilled to have the honor to introduce you to the world and introduce the world to you. Uh, it, well, it, it, to somebody, it's going to be an introduction to a, hopefully a lot of somebody's it's going to be an introduction and another way of looking at how, what affects our emotional and mental health. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so, Thank you so much. much. Thank you for being here. 
for sharing so much of yourself and what you do and who you are and why you do it. It's because that's what you were made to do. Right? Indeed. <laughs> Especially made to serve to 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 uh, serve humanity in this way. I love it, and um, it just it gives me chills. And uh, to to uh, know that the universe loves us so much to bring us you and what you do and what you bring to our lives and our homes. Um, I definitely get the book. What's color got to do with it? <laughs> Is that that's right, right? What's color got that's to do right. with it? I love it. I love it. That's and right. While you're at it, get the what's the love got to do with it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, and what you, you what you're giving to the world is so amazing too. You know, because that that I do the uh, I do healing as well. I do energy healing as well. And there's so many different emotions. Like I was telling you about the lady and her kids, the step kids, and yeah. you know, it was a thoughtless comment, but it affected her for years. Yeah, and and all these emotions do get trapped and cause issues they cause physical issues they cause mental issues and once we're able to let go of them we get to heal so what you're doing is amazing too mm, thank you and you know this is a sisterhood i love it yes. um yeah so i just wanted to say this everything that happens Yes, that comment was thoughtless, and but you know, it, it, it really was. She was just sharing. She had no idea no, of the no, impact no. of her words. No, no. and nor I did, did the person who received them. No, and, and I didn't so, mean thoughtless that she I, was. She just wasn't thinking. Like right, oh. exactly. We 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 do it all the time. Yeah, we especially before we knew you and I. Before we knew this was the norm, and it still is for many, for most. And so I just want to say that uh, there's no guilt here. No. There is just awareness to, to appreciate that our words have power. Yes. And we want to, as much as we're aware, make those words uh, have a, a, a loving power, it, it convey love. And to learn more about that, just keep tuning in to these episodes or come and see me or go and see uh, Jeanette. You, you have plenty of resources to grow into the loving being that you're here to grow into. And thank you for listening. Tune in for our Mental Emotional Health Wednesdays. You never know what you're going to have the pleasure of learning about. Thank you so much, Jeanette. And thank you for listening. And I'm going to... Uh, <clears throat>